Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. There's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. My results or visit MetaFastMN.com and tell them Rook sent you. Chris? And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. What'd you think? You were there in person. I was there in person. Uh, it was, uh, I thought in the second period, the uh, Wild had a chance. And then in the third period, Winnipeg just played that shutdown hockey, not going to let you complete two passes in a row. Mm-hmm. And uh, they pretty much uh, wore our fellas out because the last, what, eight minutes, the puck was down at the other end of the ice. Uh, they had more chances than the Wild did. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was, uh, it was, they put the crowd to sleep. In the third period, there was nothing to cheer for. I would say it was not our ice. It was not. I don't our like their ice. chances Friday. I uh, know, although they've already missing that Myers as a defenseman, and Morrissey's going to get suspended. The guy who cross checked there, he's having a NHL hearing today, which is where they get you on the phone and said, "Why well, you hit him with the head to head with the <laughs> right, stick?" Right, and you say, "Well, I really don't have a good excuse," and they say, "Okay, you're suspended for either one or two games." So they'll be short defensemen, but uh, if you got two, you we'll take it. You, yeah, you got two, you just short shift them. You know, Reavers like, is going. I know he's you know, driving up. Why not? Throw Watch another, the clincher. Throw another dollar in the in the scan, will you? <laughs> God. Why? It's why, just a, why would you want to go up there to see him lose? If well, it's 2 2, I can see it. But I had made the arrangements thinking it would be a 2 2. The arrangements game. are getting in a car and driving. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that's the arrange. Those arrangements can be canceled. I'm you, not driving. You okay? know what? Sport is fun to see in person. Well, and what better than a Canadian team clinching I will on their say ice? I went to Tom Reed's to talk to some uh, fans afterwards for a Thursday column, some Jets fans. And uh, one guy told me that if they win Friday, Saturday and Sunday aren't going to do it for the party. Oh, yeah. He said, I won't be in work Monday, maybe Tuesday. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Even though it's a week, he got the full 48 hours, uh, he doesn't think. You know, they have, this franchise has never won a, had never won a playoff game previously. Not only the Jets, but the Atlanta Thrashers before them. Had uh, they'd been each of them would have been in the playoffs once and got swept. Oh, oh. They weren't the Thrashers. They were the Thrashers. No. The Atlanta Calgary Flames was... moved to Calgary. Yeah, they put another team in Atlanta. They failed also and went to Winnipeg. Those are the Jets. I thought it was moved a... there 2012, 2011, 12. No, there's we, there's no debate here. I, I no, I, I'm not done yet. Uh-huh. What about a? I thought there was an Arizona connection. Jets moved to Arizona. Phoenix, 1996. They uh, were unsatisfied with the old building in Winnipeg. Winnipeg wouldn't build a new one. They were either going to come to Minneapolis or Phoenix. Remember the guy? What was his name? Yeah, yeah. Guy, yeah it guy. was um, Bill Austin. No, not no. Ringing a bell now. Yeah, I can't remember what So did the Jets was. become the Coyotes? Jets became the Coyotes, yes. <laughs> And the Thrashers became Thrashers the Jets. Thrashers became the Jets, but they were without uh, NHL hockey for 15 years. Mm-hmm. They were, you know, that the Manitoba Moose, mm-hmm. who were the Minnesota Moose, which yeah. lasted, what, one year in St. Paul? Yeah, right? not too long. And then they went to Manitoba, and they were in Winnipeg for a while, 
and then they moved somewhere else, Thunder Bay or something. And now they they are the farm. They are the AHL farm club playing the same arena as the Jets and fill her up. I'll be damned. Yeah, they uh, their playoffs haven't started yet. Those guys told me they're hmm. uh, they're a week later than these guys. So anyway, but they uh, so they got they got the good system for the farm club though. Same building, different locker room. Yeah. Hey, we, we're short. Of, we need a we're guy. Short we're short of player. Guy. Get a guy over here. We'll pay the travel costs. So anyway, do you realize? I did not realize. I looked up the original Jets in the WHA. Of course, they're one of the few that survived. Were they Winnipeg? They were the Winnipeg Jets. Yep. Yes. And the WHA, I believe, lasted eight years, and they won three of the titles, including the last. Uh, two, yeah. and of course, I think their Jets nickname comes from signing Bobby Hull, right? Weren't they the Jets? Must they, have been. Yeah, Bobby but Hull. But now their logo has an airplane. Yeah, well, I guess that might have been the excuse they used, but I think the motivation might have been the Bobby. they signed Bobby Hull. That, uh, you know who started that uh, that franchise, too? Wasn't that, uh, was that Wild Bill Hunter? I, I can't know. remember. You're, or maybe he was Edmonton. You're going too deep into the time machine. Wild Bill Hunter was the first. He owned one of the teams. And he was the first president of the WHA, uh, which Davidson and Dennis Murphy started. Who survived the WHA? Edmonton? Edmonton. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Quebec. Quebec, which is now Colorado. And uh, Hartford Whalers. I which believe. is now Carolina Hurricanes. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yeah. And so... Of those four, the only one who stayed put was uh, Edmonton. Who disappeared? Indianapolis Racers. Chicago had a team, didn't they? The Indianapolis Ra Racers disappeared. I'm not sure who still survived. It. That league was unbelievable Rook. at the end. Rook. Looking. What? Are you looking up the WHA? Oh, anyway, still I wanted, Minnesota Moose. I wanted to tell you about Bill Hunter. The day that the WHA has announced. Cincinnati Stingers. He's the uh, they they moved to Birmingham. Oh, I'm sorry. They moved to Birmingham. Hmm. They might have went out of business. That's timeline of teams. Okay, I got uh, this. Is the WHA timeline of teams? Who's, the, who's there in '79? Who's still there in '79? Uh, let's see. Winnipeg. Yeah, they don't have the. Okay, wait. In '79, Edmonton, the Edmonton Oilers, '73 to '79, yeah. joined yeah. the NHL yeah. as yeah, the Edmonton yeah, Oilers. Yeah. Uh, the Cincinnati Stingers folded in mm -hmm. 79. Okay. okay. Never, I don't remember them. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who else? Let me go down the list Quebec. here. Quebec. Yeah, they became Did you guys mention Colorado. Quebec? New England Quebec. Whalers they, joined as the Hartford Whalers. They're now, which are, they're now North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Correct. And 79. Folded 79 were the Ottawa Nationals. They're back. Toronto right? Toros and the Birmingham Bulls. Oh, they're all listed did. as one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. And they all folded. Okay, so I gave you the four that survived. And the San Francisco Sharks. Wait, here we go. San Francisco Sharks on the Quebec, as the Quebec Nordiques, who are now the Colorado Avalanche. I can't remember the San Francisco Sharks. Winnipeg Jets, now the Arizona Coyotes. I already gave you the four. We're done with that. We got I already it. gave you the four. What were you going to say? Wild um, Bill Hunter, president yeah. of the WHA. Yep. Opening remarks when they're announcing the new league. Welcome to the greatest day in the history of the world. <laughs> Which seemed to be an overstatement. Yeah. I think just a tad. <laughs> Wild Bill was the guy who ha I had lunch with him and O'Halloran downtown at yeah. the athletic club when they were going to start the Global Hockey League. Yeah. And Bill, who is from Saskatoon, is going to put the first team in Saskatoon, and there was a and we were going to have a team in St. Paul and we were thinking maybe Miami, but it was going to be a it was going to be a tidy league. It was going to be quite a rivalry, Saskatoon and St. Paul. Yeah. You'd play eighty games to get the home field ice advantage for the playoffs. I guess so. I can't believe Seattle will get a team before Hamilton, Ontario. Oh well, yes, size of the city, uh, west, all that Hamilton. Yeah, but you know not... Hamilton would be a guaranteed sellout every night. Yeah, but Seattle would do well too. Yeah. Seattle. Seattle's had that very successful junior team out there for decades, the Thunderbirds. And they've never had an NHL team, have they? Nope. 
Rook, I can't, uh, I can't make this work. Plus, Joe, they're going to come up with seven hundred million. You know who's, you know who's just got hired out there, don't mm. you? Todd Lewicki. Oh, really? Left the NFL to lead okay. that, uh, that thing there. We're going to be back in just a moment. Reavers. Oh, he left. Road. I wanted to know if he was road tripping this with some guys or going by himself. I think he's going by himself. I think he's going completely solo. Are we running a night game in Puerto Rico tonight on a yeah, generator? Run around a generator. It was supposed to rain. I'm not sure what's going on, but the bad news is the airport is closed. Mm. They they have enough power to get the game not again game going, but the airports. So our our fellas might have to take a boat to Tampa Bay to play Friday after they get done playing down there. I'm I'm not sure. So because of the electrical grid problem, there's no landing lights there's no tower yeah, there's no none, none of that good stuff nothing no no you just you know what you'd do if you're flying out of there take a shot. take a vote <laughs> take a vote let's go how tough could it be it's a straight runway you'll yeah, lift off yeah, let's go let's go i don't know i told kenny that some of the airline occurrences of recent days have caused me to start revamping my uh, theory that, uh, you know, let's take a boat. Cameo let's, Schultz, quite an impressive pilot. Yes, yes, the poor gal who uh, died. No, uh, no, she was the pilot. No, I know, but uh, yes, a former Navy fighter pilot. Mm-hmm. Congratulations to her. Very calm. I ran across this story out of Oklahoma City. I'm here for you. Okay. Brett Butler, 16, is being held on a murder complaint. Uh, he and his brother, Kevin Don Bottler, 22, and their mother's boyfriend, Johnny Shane Barker, 43, were booked on complaints of being an accessory to murder after the fact. Uh, so here's the deal. On Saturday, the two guys that got shot, Elise Raymond Gutta Twin Smith, mm-hmm. Gutta Twin, that's his nickname, mm-hmm. Gutta Twin, mm-hmm. at 21, and Jerome Keontae Parentheses four hundred parentheses That's his Moreland twenty one. They met the bottlers who were gonna they were gonna sell a gun to the bottlers, right? All right. When they got into the bottlers minivan, Brett Bottler told police he heard a gun being racked and shot both men. So A don't do business with guys that have nicknames that make no sense. Okay. That's my theory. Kind right. of a cool nickname. And B, yeah. Yeah. Got a twin. Or 400. Neither of those make any sense, no. right? Let's go to so Action don't. Force Team 1500. And oh, this isn't uh, this isn't worth uh, diverting from Pat's story. And no. B, uh, you know, the gun the the gun deal is uh, uh, don't sell guns guns to guys with nicknames like that. They might try to shoot you, and then you got to shoot them, and then they, you got to throw them in a pond in Oklahoma City. And you got a big problem. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm just saying. Don't do business with a guy named Gutta Twin. That's my Or theory. 400. Or 400. What yeah. state was this, Patrick? Oklahoma Oklahoma. City. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Go Thunder! <laughs> so, Northbound 494 is now jamming right around County 6 in Plymouth. It's due to an incident north of 49th Avenue. You know those job site office trailers, Joe? You go to a construction site, you got to sure. go see the foreman. There's yeah. Yeah. one of those things uh, somehow managed to find itself off, partially off the road. Everybody's over on the right shoulder. I don't know if this guy was pulling to the shoulder and he went too deep and the uh, wheels got mired in the muck or what happened. Uh, the truck isn't in the ditch at all. As you, you're looking at it, right? Yeah, you yeah, can see it. Yeah. It's just the back end of the uh, the job site trailer that's kind of down in the snowbank there. Get about 15 guys to ho- hoist it back onto the trailer. So they have uh, the right lane blocked and a big rig tow is on the scene. I don't know how they're going to get this out or how long it's going to take, but right now uh, traffic on northbound 494 jamming right around 55, maybe a little bit before. Kenny, I have a complaint with our MnDOT guys, by the way. Lay it on me. Last night... The Minnesota Wild were playing a home game in the playoffs. There was over 19,000 people there, a 106% of capacity. And about half the, if you go to the West Suburbs, you realize that half the people right. who go to games are from the Western Suburbs, right? right? Yeah. Okay. We got the snow removal out at 1030 
right over by Cedar there yeah. at 35, just clogging up the whole thing and backing it up. They've been. Can uh, we wait till midnight, you morons? <laughs> <laughs> They've actually been working around the clock, Patrick. They worked all day yesterday and all night. By the way, it's going to melt in two days. You know what? It's not melting. That's been the problem. We're, this isn't know. melting. Well, it's and, gonna melt. uh, all these cheerful weathermen are saying, we're burning snow today. <laughs> no, we're not. It's not melting. <laughs> and you are among one of millions that have been tied up in the uh, snow removal crew back up in the last couple of days. As a matter of fact, I left my house uh, in South Minneapolis this morning. Tried to I, I needed to go up to St. Cloud, so I tried to take the Hiawatha exit mm-hmm. to westbound 94, closed due to a snow removal crew. Oh, so I okay. thought, okay, I can't go westbound 94. I'll take northbound W up to 694. I did that, but as soon as I got to Fridley, it was stop and go because the snow removal crew was working on the river bridge. Why'd and, you have to go to St. Cloud? Uh, I did a little that's, business up that's there. his I own think. deal, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah I, I, that's, I, I don't think you're sitting in your answer, business what my friend is <laughs> doing I, up in St. Cloud. I didn't expect an answer. I just sure. asked him. Sometimes I like to go to other places to mind my own business. <laughs> And uh, that's what I did. And uh, but thankfully, when I came back into town no, around no two, I came back into town around two o'clock. I didn't find I just, any snow. Just removal once crews. in a while, you have to look at the schedules. Yeah, you know? once in a while. I just used look. to be on that bash Mindot bandwagon, but I've finally grown up and I've realized yeah. these guys face an insurmountable task. Well, I and it's thankless, and everybody hates them. And even when Mindot does right. They get criticized. You still want so. to clean the tunnel when the Yankees are in town. <laughs> yes. I managed to get the, uh, I managed to create a far right lane beyond the far right lane and get over to seventh <laughs> on about two wheels I've, and go in that I saw, I, saw, I saw some of that behavior today when I was Joey stuck Chitwood. in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we made her. But I used to have the loudest voice of all the MnDOT haters, and now I'm completely opposite. I uh, mm-hmm. I don't criticize them at all. I do think my theory of not repairing the roads over there when you get off 280 mm-hmm. and you come up here. I think they're doing come, that come already, back aren't to they? Territorial. Mm-hmm. You know, Kenny, has this ever happened to you? You're a traffic guy. <laughs> On my route home, mm-hmm. there's I, there's a big sweeping curve. In Mississippi River Boulevard. Yes, I know that curve. Okay, and I take it at a crawling pace mm-hmm. because Why? it's well, it's potholed, it's destroyed. Is it the one down by Ford Parkway? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. It's you, destroyed. Yeah, that one. You so have I to go, go slow. I, I'm just crawling. And yeah. yesterday, two people gave me the look of disgust mm-hmm. and Did they passed me. This? And I'm trying to. I'm saying I'm doing you yeah, morons a favor. <laughs> yeah. They don't care about their cars, apparently. They don't. They don't. And I usually replace a couple of sets of ball joints every year. I don't want to. Yeah, and it's from that. It's yeah. from hitting these potholes too hard. And that that stretch, by the way, is that's pretty bad. Right? I just, told you last week I got the double fingers over the steering wheel <laughs> right. and then the finger out the car window when What'd the guy came by me. You got the hat trick. I was in the left lane on, and also the following on the bumper. I was in the left lane. Keeping a proper distance behind the guy in front of me, but there was nowhere for this guy to go because mm-hmm. there were traffic. But he wanted to. He was. He got, wanted to get that next fifty yards. Right. Well, you were squatting, is what you were doing. You were camped out in the left lane like an oldster. No. Don't do that. Well, because people were all backed up trying to go through the tunnel, and I was going downtown. <laughs> and this guy was. Uh, I yeah. think I think as I told these guys, I think there was some ageism involved in his reaction. It's just it's just road rage, man. Everybody's yeah, everywhere. Everybody is super angry. Sports mm-hmm. talk will return shortly, but now thanks to our great friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal. In your money now. Look, please tell Patrick I didn't know it was him. I apologized twice already. <laughs> right. I'll be a little more careful next time. Stocks were mixed at today's market close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average failed to hold on to some early gains and fell 38 points, closing at 24,748. The NASDAQ Composite gained 14 points, and the S&P 500 picked up two points. Dick Sporting Goods is destroying all of the guns and accessories it stopped selling earlier 
this year after the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. The retailer said it is in the process of destroying the firearms it pulled from its shelves rather than trying to return them to their manufacturers. Target stores in Florida and Texas are now offering drive-up service, joining six other states in the South. Orders can be placed with the Target mobile app and should be ready in less than two hours. Customers then park in designated spots outside the store and employees bring out the stuff. Target hopes to expand that service to about 1,000 stores across the country by the end of the year. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, Bruce, we thank you very much. You can go now. Take the, right. rest, take the rest of the day off. Uh, we're going to check traffic, and it's sponsored by Dickie's Barbecue Pit. If you're on the west side, uh, you're going to run into a problem here on northbound 494. A day cab rig pulling a job site office trailer somehow managed to find itself partially in the ditch. They're on the right side, northbound 494, north of 49th, and that's why traffic is currently jamming at Highway 55. Uh, rolling between the downtowns, looking pretty good uh, right now. Both directions are nice. Uh, westbound 94 at 11 minutes. Eastbound between also 11 minutes. Dickie's Barbecue Pit, where the very best quality meats are slow smoked for 14 hours every day. Dickie's. <laughs> Here's John Hyde. Not yet. So I got the inside story on this uh, overside load, the semi hauling the construction uh, job site office trailer. Mm -hmm. The guy had a blown tire. The blown tire caused a broken axle. Okay. Okay. First, they were going to lift this up and slide a temporary axle under it. Uh, but now they find that they can't lift it because they're afraid it's going to fall apart. Oh. Mm-hmm. So they're going to try and repair the axle or axles, plural, on site. Could be hours. This well, guy's going to be late for supper. Could be years. Where are we at there, Kenny? Northbound 494, north of 49th, up in uh, oh. Maple Grove border up there. Okay, so Johnny Height might have a little traffic on the way home today. Huh? No, I don't think he goes that's, that way. That's out of my way. That's okay. way out of that's my way. way. Um, but you know, when you're pulling something, you're all like this, this big, oversized load in traffic, you're already on edge. Yep. Can you imagine <laughs> this poor bastard now? Oh, you got to feel for him. Mm-hmm. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> it's cloudy. Should've checked the tires before he left. <laughs> yeah. 36 degrees. Uh, the Wild now down three games to one after that loss last night. Series heads back to Winnipeg for game five. They'll play Friday night. That is a 6 How about your start. expansion, Vegas Club? Yeah. Yeah, swept the Kings. Swept them. Mm-hmm. 1-0. Bored them, bored them to death last night. Uh, Eric Halla uh, got 29 goals, I believe, for that team this year. And won at least one in the playoffs. So. <laughs> Uh, the the expansion rule is corrupt. That that, that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> no, they yeah, Judd's very upset. He thinks expansion teams are supposed to lose. Yeah, not when you pay that. No, much. absolutely, they should. This this is corruption at its core. Now <laughs> well, Seattle has to come in and top this. Yes, they they are going to let you, for well, seven hundred. About fifteen people they'll make available. <laughs> Wolves with uh, Game 2 in their playoff series tonight down in Houston. The Rockets lead the series one game to none. I don't think I'm going to make her to the finish, Johnny. Yeah. I'm tired, man. I didn't get That's a good late night start, game. too. Eight, That's way it'll past be, They say 8.30, but it'll be 8.45. Be, yeah. Don't worry, it'll be over early. <laughs> To Wednesday, the Indians will try and play tonight again in Puerto Rico. They're, of course, having an island-wide blackout, if you haven't heard. But the mayor says uh, they'll play the game. Play ball. uh, Let's have our priorities. The hell with with the public. Let's have a ball game. I want to see the aerial shot where the only lights on the whole (laughs) island are in the ball game. Uh, how's the rain down there, Johnny? What do you hear? Uh, last I saw, there was some uh, sporadic rain, but nothing heavy nothing, yet. Okay. So, uh, it was, uh, yeah. It's not fair that you don't play for four days and then you got to face Kluber. Yeah. Uh, tonight, uh, if they do play Puerto Rican native Jose Barrios pitches for the Twins, Carlos Carrasco, who's also pretty good. Goes yes. for the Indians. Mm-hmm. Uh, Minnesota United today announced they've reached their cap of 14,500 season tickets for 2018. Uh, they'll start a waiting list for fans interested in season tickets at the, the new Allianz Field. How much do we have to pony up to uh, say where we're buying tickets, Johnny? Do you know? I don't know that, to be mm-hmm. truthful. What is the I new place going to seat? 
Is it a twenty thousand? Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Not big enough. They both. Yeah, that's what they said. said. It won't be big enough. It's going to be plump full. Uh, mm-hmm. All these folks for this season, fourteen thousand five hundred, uh, will have the opportunity to get seats at the new place. Wait, so they're already saying it's not big enough? So are we already <laughs> petitioning <laughs> for a new stadium? Right. Well, they're paying for it themselves. That's so. true. Uh, the next United game, by the way, you'll hear it right here Sunday against Seattle on the West Coast, two thirty pre-match and three o'clock uh, tip-off. Uh, That's tip okay off? with the traffic. Kick-off. That's okay with the traffic. Nobody will get there in time anyway, so they'll be able to go in shifts. Uh, you guys know Bruno San Martino was? Oh, haven't oh, yeah. yes, fantastic! Don't tell me Bruno's no longer with us. We we have lost Bruno. Yeah. I'm sorry oh, to report. A good guy, champion of yeah. all time in Sold wrestling. Sold out Madison Square Garden 187 times. Is that right? What? Uh, he, Holy uh, cow! He passed away this morning. He'd been in the hospital for two months, according to his manager. He was 82 years old. Uh, San Martino Why did he still have a manager. He wasn't wrestling. He, he still made autographs. Go yeah. sign autographs. Yeah. Uh, he was the longtime champion of the Worldwide Wrestling Federation in the '60s and '70s, and later worked as a TV announcer for the company now known as WWE as it began global expansion in the '80s. After a long separation, he returned in 2013 and was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> as a boy in Italy, San Martino was forced to flee into the mountains with his mom after their tiny village was invaded by the Nazis during World War II. Two Good of them. backstory, whether it's true or not, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two of them eventually joined his immigrant father in Pittsburgh in 19. Now, does this story have anything to do with how Jesse grew up on the mean drew grew up on the mean streets of San Diego, no. working on his body? <laughs> remember, right. I was surfer boy back then before I was the body. <laughs> no, you weren't. You were South Side of Minneapolis. I, I don't know. Do what now? <laughs> Bruno, uh, yeah, that was, uh, man, he was always the good guy, too. Never the no. bad guy. Jesse what? went to school at uh, Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. I'm off the grid now, Kenny. It's not <laughs> what they announced every day, uh, every time he wrestled. They said he was from San Diego. Rook, uh, did Bruno ever try to call you in as you pretending to be him on the phone? Ah, <laughs> uh, that was Billy Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> There were no Bruno antics. <laughs> or it might have just been Rook messing around. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, Billy, that's just Rook playing around. So how you been, Billy? What's going on? What have we been up to? He still doesn't know that it's you. So I never feared for my life more than that day. Oh, Billy. Because I was pulling one over on him, and he didn't necessarily like that. Well, no, let's be candid. He didn't get it. <laughs> But then when he kind of found out, <laughs> the, uh, you know, that's just Rook screwing yeah. around. News notes from Billy, t- what are you up to now? <laughs> like, but that's oh, after he gotta, tells you to quit screwing around. Yeah, that's after I went like this with the phone, like, oh, it's Billy Pierce. Billy, how you doing, Governor? Or Jesse, what's going on? And then and then I hung up the phone like this, and he's looking at me as I hung up the phone, and he said, that's just Rook messing around. Billy, what have you been up to? Where did Rook find you? And then I didn't know what to do. I kind of had to explain it to him. Oh, Were you ever tempted to just get up and walk out? And just quit? At that point, yes. Quit on At the that spot. point, yes. That was one point. News <laughs> notes from today. Former Republican Party Chairman Keith Downey is ending his campaign for governor. An announcement coming, of course, in the didn't wake take of... take long for Tim to run no, him out of the no. field, did it? Comes in the wake of uh, Governor... Uh, Former Governor Tim Pawlenty entering the race. Campaign figures released yesterday showed Pawlenty had quickly raised a million dollars, almost ten times that of his nearest competitor. Downey said in his announcement today that the opportunity for him to win, quote, has closed. After record-setting snow, concerns of flooding now are being raised as a big melt is anticipated. According to the Weather Service, the Metro has received more than 70 inches of snow since January 1st. National Weather Service meteorologist Tim Taggart says if it melts fast, we've got a problem. Everything's flowing into rivers. Another aspect, we still have frozen ground, and that's an anomaly for this time of year. Team of International Chemical Weapons Inspectors, uh, they went to Syria to check out this alleged poison gas attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been delayed a little bit. They won't after, let them in, right? Well, a U.N.'s advanced security team came under fire. Mm -hmm. Remained unclear today, 11 days after the attack, when the team of inspectors from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons might reach the Damascus suburb. As soon as we get the gas out of here, we'll uh, we'll let you come in and inspect it. Exactly. They came under small arms fire and an explosive was detonated at one of the two sites the team was supposed to visit. What the hell, though? We're buddies with the little guy in North Korea now. We're we're chums. We're chums. 
In Logan, Utah, a washing machine full of gasoline-soaked clothing exploded at a laundromat. Oh, no. Yesterday afternoon, blowing out the windows but sparing injury (laughs) for the handful of people who were inside. So, check this out. Check this out. You mean to tell me? (laughs) The guy's got gas on the... Police said a customer had soaked his tar-stained laundry in gasoline mm-hmm. overnight in order to remove the residue. Oh, sure. Okay. There it is. Get rid of it. Well, then he went to the day and night laundromat. As soon as he turned on the washer, <laughs> the vapor ignited, sending parts of the machines flying everywhere. <laughs> wow. According to Logan City Fire Marshal Craig Humphreys. Humphreys said, it's a miracle we had no injuries. When officers got there, they could smell gasoline and see the aftermath from the obvious explosion which included small spots of fire all around the laundromat. Humphreys didn't release the name of the man whose oh, clothes sparked on, the explosion. come on, give us the name! We need to know. Yes. He said there were three or four people inside the laundromat at the time. A fellow who was waiting for his clothes to dry, Sergio Gonzalez, said he heard what sounded like a bomb and started running, but he still felt the force of the blast <laughs> like somebody was pushing me out the door. Mm-hmm. Humphrey said his team believed the building sustained little damage besides some broken machines and shattered windows, but they are continuing to investigate. And some shredded and carpet they, uh, are drapes. Are they still a big and... business, laundromats? Oh, yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They haven't gone the way of the drive-in theater. No. Logan, Utah is just east of what prominent U.S. history location? I thought this was a laundromat. Mormon person. Temple. No, Promontory, Utah. Why oh, is that famous? Devil's Tower. Promontory. Oh, that's Wyoming. Promontory. Why is that famous? Tell me why that's Can't famous. Pikes Peak. You no. give someone a no, loan, you give Colorado. them a promontory note. That's where the railroads <laughs> met. Oh. That famous oh. photograph. All right. Logan is also, I believe, the home of Utah State, is it not? Hmm. Utah State I believe State it is. Uh, it is surrounded, though, by beautiful peaks. <laughs> mm. Okay, I got it, Rook. Here's John Height. Why, thank you, Joe. Quite a payday for John Stalupi as he cashed out his 145-car collection housed in Palm Beach, Florida. The cars were part of Stalupi's Cars of Dreams Museum, which went under the auction gavel this past weekend at Barrett Jackson's annual Palm Beach sale. Uh, He uh, sold uh, cars and got $13.96 million dollars. An average of ninety six grand per car, and I bet he still feels like he got taken to the cleaner. <laughs> I wonder what Barrett Jackson got. Uh, eight yeah, of, good question. Eight of the top ten sales at the twenty eighteen Barrett Jackson Palm Beach auction were from the Stalupi collection, including the second highest sale of the event, a nineteen fifty nine Desoto Adventure convertible that Ooh. sold for three hundred thirty grand. Goodness. Hey, uh, Johnny, where did do we know where John got the money to we get do. started in all of this? I, uh, I had to look that up mm-hmm. because I did not know it. You thought. reporters don't know how to mind your own business. Do you? <laughs> he, he Just actually, let the guy be. He's got some money to did spend. Did the market wrecking uh, Jerry Seinfeld show up down there and pay eight hundred grand for a Porsche three fifty six that's rusted out? <laughs> that the I windows did, don't close. Right. Did not see. Yeah, uh, other n- pile of crap. <laughs> other notable cars from Stalupi's collection. A 1970 Plymouth Superbird for 286 grand. Wow. A 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air Custom Convertible for 275 grand. A 59 Cadillac Eldorado Convertible for oh, 230. That's what I'm grand. talking. That's the car I right there. That, yeah. That's the one. How you that. doing back there? <laughs> <laughs> Stalupi's collection focused on American convertibles from the 40s through the 60s. Uh, he had some other things too, though. Uh, now I don't know what this is. A 1959. Auto Bianchi Bianchina? Anybody? Well, it must be it's something Italian. Italian. Oh, yes, yes. A 1971 Fiat Jolly Tribute car. That's a little mm. beach car that Fiat made uh-huh. where you'd run around on the Mediterranean on the sand and pick up chicks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With the proceeds. Is that, to, is that your history? That's your. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, okay. Yeah. With his proceeds, Loopy bought a 1988 Chevrolet Corvette 35th Anniversary Edition for 200 grand, with all the money benefiting the American Heart Association. And then, because he's obviously a good fella, he donated the vehicle right back to Barrett Jackson to be sold again for charity. Wow. Now, well, where's his money nice. from, though? Mr. Stalupi 
Uh, no, I don't think you should tell I us. I want to know. We well, need to mind our own business. No, 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 see, no, no, we don't. When I read this story, I had to know Kenny, so sure, I should right. tell everybody no, no, Wait, wait, before you give it away, yeah, what for, if they were your cars, Such? They're gone now. What do I mm-hmm. care? No, I, I mean, would you want people examining your backside? I'm telling everybody. Find yeah. out where well, every penny yeah. came from? Guy was well, probably a trash collector, here, right? Here's the deal. <laughs> he's pretty well known already. I just didn't know him. I had to look it up. Uh, he started with a Sunoco, you know, the gas station. Sure. Right. Sunoco. Sunoco. Yeah, he had one of those, okay? Mm-hmm. Sunoco. He took, he took his <laughs> money from the Sunoco gas uh-huh. station, <laughs> and he was one of the very first investors in a little company named Honda. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, and, uh, okay. He's now worth $400 million. So, so American uh, Honda? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Before they uh, were famous in any respect, cars How old or is motorcycles. He? Uh seventy something, I don't recall to be mm-hmm. truthful. Uh, he's an older fellow. How many who... times has he been married? When did he lose his virginity? <laughs> <laughs> What's with his parents? <laughs> See, any no. illegitimate kids, mistresses? <laughs> Joe, here's what I'm up against. I was quite proud uh, taking yes. taking you always tell me to research. I this absolutely stuff. demand so, uh, that you be uh, curious and now it, there's more on this over here. He's making fun like of an idiot. <laughs> I'm saying if it, the shoe was on the other foot, you'd feel differently, no, Such, not at all. if they were examining you. No, they're not. No one's examining him. We want to know where he made his money. <laughs> That's nobody's oh, business. That's my business. <laughs> at Sonico. At Sonico. <laughs> Uh, bidets. I, want I had an oily this. rag in his pocket, and he went from that to 400 mil. I want to own a quick trip. Okay. I like quick. Do you want to work there? I want to. No, I just oh, want somebody. Please to come and bring tell me, me you'd be a cashier. I just yeah. want somebody to come and bring me the money. I hey, mean, buddy, yeah. what pump number do you have? Yeah. As I said before, don't we be do not throw- have a bathroom. <laughs> don't be throwing those donuts away. We yeah. can sell them again yeah. tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and remember, no. You know what I'd like you to ask if you're the cashier? <laughs> gas out there? No, yeah. no. I went out there to play tennis. What do you mean, gas out there? <laughs> well, see, now that's the opposite of everybody else because we all pay at the pump then we go in and buy yes, something no, I pay and we all station. answer and we all answer no we well, paid at the pump the What's trouble wrong with is you? now if you don't pay at the pump we all think you're a drive off yes <laughs> you know? that's true well, but i go into quick trip without getting gas just to get stuff mm-hmm. do you ever park at the pumps not buy gas and oh, go in. You do no, not. that's bad juju. You do not. Oh, that is oh, bad juju. Oh, oh. I will run right into you. I yeah. will push your car if out of the If it's really way. busy and that's the only spot to park, I will. That is un-American. You know what that is? That's worse than me saying Sonico. <laughs> A lot is. worse. That is lot one worse. of the Dang worst it. behaviors you can possibly oh. exhibit. But there's public. nowhere else to park. You do not park at a pump without pumping gas. Yeah, I uh, the super hot tornadoes are two for 99, <laughs> and you can get uh, burritos after four. We're going to go see for a No, minute. we're not having that All crap. Brands. We're not having burritos <laughs> and stuff. super hot you tornadoes. Sell fruit, you sell fruit at this quick no. trip? Hot <laughs> dogs. <laughs> hot dogs and Dale donuts. A couple roller dogs. <laughs> we sell <laughs> about to expire bananas. <laughs> Very low, low cost. <laughs> you got any <No>. plantains? <laughs> uh, yes, you have to know the difference. <laughs> and just acres and acres of Diet Coke. Yes. That's it. You sell. <laughs> Diet Coke. That's it. Their, uh, their catchphrase, too, when you leave Quick Trip is see you next time. So can you hear Patrick? Oh, uh, see you later. Get, get, later. get out of here. See you next yes. time. Yes, Beat it, pal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any money. Oh. Uh, bidets are normally associated with sure. old posh hotels, fancy apartments. They soon could be making an appearance in airplanes. A new design. Oh, for, how's that going to work during turbulence? New de- <laughs> design for a commercially viable aircraft. That bidet guy's been in there a long time. Was unveiled recently at the Aircraft Interiors Expo in Hamburg by Zodiac Aerospace, <laughs> one of the biggest cabin interior uh, components manufacturers. Uh, according to the company, which posted a picture of the new design on Twitter, it will be more reliable than other bidets currently on the market, and it includes an auto-sanitize feature. <laughs> they are, of course, regular features on private jets. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. But the Revolution Premium Bidet is thought to be the first offered to any commercial airlines. According to Travel and Leisure, the bidet will have a range of functions. will also include special UV lighting, which will be used for disinfecting. Got a pretty tough use. question for you. Yeah. I, uh, what famous rock band developed their chops in Hamburg? 
Very uh, famous. The Beatles. The Beatles. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's that's not that tough. I know. Um, it that was I funny. actually designed <laughs> when I was a kid, and I just knew I that. moved to the Twin I know, Cities. John, that's why I asked. It. Uh, I was living in a house with a bunch of other guys, and we installed our own bidet. Uh, okay. We, <laughs> we took. Did you use a garden hose? <laughs> oh, hose. Jim, underneath going. <laughs> no. Oh. You, you know that hose? <laughs> you look pretty good now, Kenny. <laughs> no, it's even worse. You know that hose you have on the kitchen sink that you use oh, yeah, for water? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. We, we hooked one of those up to the <laughs> bathroom sink. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> Give yourself a little watch oh, down. Oh. Kenny, five top moments in <laughs> Twin Cities radio history. Dave Hill from Japan. Oh, oh yeah, awesome. yeah. I still think of that every time I hear Bidet. Yeah, oh. he's, didn't he say he sat on it for six yeah, hours? Yeah, it changed my life, he said. <laughs>